Come here. Come here. They want to see. Coda. Come here. They want to see you. Oh. Oh. Oh, goodness. Oh, your paws are dirty and wet. Oh. Oh, I just got mud all over my pants. <laughs> Tyler just took him out, and uh, I didn't think about the fact that his paws were covered in mud. So my pants. My pants are now covered in mud. That's great. Was it worth it? I don't know if it was worth it for me, but I hope you're happy. <laughs> I hope you're happy now. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Natalie, and today we are watching Saving Private Ryan. Welcome back to my channel, everybody. Thank you so much for being here and welcome if you are new. Today we are jumping into a movie that has been requested a lot on my channel and uh, one that I know is gonna make me cry. Don't worry. I have an entire fresh box of tissues right here. <laughs> you guys might notice that I am in a new location. Um, I'm gonna be filming a few videos from here. I'm spending some time in a new location. Just briefly, I will be going back to the old studio at some point, but um, if you notice any weird issues with the quality, um, I'm doing my best here, but I am filming on my laptop and not my PC. So I do apologize if there's any notable difference in the quality of these few videos that I am doing in a new location. I am really trying my best um, to keep the quality as similar as possible to what you guys are used to. I do have a fancy fireplace behind me. I think that's pretty cool. But yeah, I, uh, I am in a new location for a few weeks. So uh, please bear with me on that. I'm excited to be jumping into this one today, although I have a feeling it is going to wreck me a lot. When it comes to World War II pieces, that war hits me harder than any other war. I think being Jewish and then just learning a lot about the Holocaust growing up, there, there are just certain things that hit me harder when it comes to learning about that war. But both of the world wars in particular are just such gruesome, dark moments in our history. And so whenever I revisit stories that take place in either of those time frames, um, it definitely is really hard. It definitely hits me really hard. So yeah, if you don't like the tears, I might skip this one. Cause honestly, I don't know much about this movie and I already know I'm gonna cry. <laughs> because it's Spielberg and it's World War II. So yeah, this might be a tough one, but it's definitely a classic and I'm really excited to get into this movie with you guys. There are a lot of movies that we haven't watched on my channel that I'm really excited to be diving into, things that are classics and critically acclaimed. And this is definitely one of those movies. You guys have suggested it a ton, but we just haven't gotten around to it yet. So I am excited to be finally getting around to this movie. I definitely think... It's gonna be a bit somber, but I do think it will be a beautiful experience. And I'm really interested to see what Spielberg did in this movie. I think I briefly saw that Tom Hanks was in it. So that's another reason that I think I might cry because Tom Hanks is amazing and I love him and he's brilliant in everything that he does. So <laughs> he's probably gonna make me cry because he made me weep um, over a beach ball or volleyball in Castaway. So I think I'm just screwed when it comes to this one. I know a lot of people have suggested Forrest Gump on my channel as well. I have seen Forrest Gump many times. It's a great movie. I probably will watch it at some point on my channel, but it's, it's just not gonna be a first time reaction. So I'm prioritizing first time watching things over things that I've already seen and I'm very familiar with. But other than that, I know nothing about this movie. I just know World War II, Spielberg, Tom Hanks. So definitely seems like a good formula for making many people cry. So yeah, I don't want to talk too much for this intro. I want to kind of just jump into the movie, but real quick, I will say that for those who don't know, I do have a Patreon page where you can catch all my full length reactions to everything we watch over here on this channel. You just click the link down below in my description. I always link my Patreon there and you could also vote in polls and help me decide what I watch next. But without any further ado, guys, I think we should just jump on into this movie and yeah, I'm going to brace myself for this one. I'm nervous to push play. <laughs> But I'm also really excited. I think it'll be a beautiful experience from what I've heard. So if you guys are ready, grab a drink, grab a snack, and let's get into the movie. Can I just rent it on YouTube? <laughs> Saving Private Ryan. Or is this his family? Is this a memorial and this is this man's family? The music is already gorgeous. 
Oh yeah, it's a memorial. Oh, is he? Are we going back now in time in his mind? Yeah, here we are. June 6, 1944, Omaha Beach. Oh, there he is. There's Tom. Oh, is he in charge? Oh God. They're not even making it off the boat. I'm always so impressed with war films and the way they're filmed because like you have to coordinate like the amount of blocking that goes into them and how many freaking extras and the amount of coordination you have to have and try to wrangle a ton of people and sequences. It's insane. <gasps> no, God! He went to all that work to help him and he said, thank you. And then he just died. Oh, Jesus Christ. This is already so brutal. And the fact that we had all this beautiful, like this beautiful score and beautiful sound design leading up to this. And now it's just silent with like guns and explosions, like no music underneath. It's really jarring. The only one I know is gonna survive is Tom and he's probably gonna be put through hell. God, this is how we're starting. Oh, Jesus Christ. Jesus, this is so like heart-wrenching already. The amount of men that have died. Like this is why watching anything related to World War II and World War I, it's so brutal because the, just the sheer number of people that have died in these wars, it was insane. Come on, ah! He's dragging his friend. Did he just lose him? His friend's gone, isn't he? This is too real, guys. Holy crap. No armor has made it ashore. We got no DZ tanks on the beach. He's using that man's radio. Does he not have a radio? First wave, ineffective. Oh, your helmet fell off, man. Get your helmet on. Sir oh, God. Sir oh, my God. What a way to reveal that guy being dead. Like he uses the phone two times through him. And then the third time he pulls him over, he's not there anymore. It's just insane. It's so effective. Oh God, guys, Marty, like this is so upsetting on so many levels. He just wants to save people and he can't. This movie really just throws you in it. Like we're just going, you know, we didn't get like a real introduction to any of the characters individually. It's just like dropping you into the war. It's very effective at shaking me, honestly. Hey Fish, yeah. look at this, a Hitler youth knife. And now it's a Shabbat Holocaust, right? No. God, watching boys cry, like, it's just, I can't. Oh God, where do we go from here, guys? You know, when you see like the amount of people that were killed in both of the world wars, and then you like see a lot of the battlefields where these massive battles took place and thousands of people died, and you see that no tree has grown back, it makes sense, like, it still has left a scar on nature, you know? <gasps> Ryan, I'm confused. That was Ryan? Sean Ryan. What? This man at Utah. Peter Ryan. Daniel. Oh. Ryan. This afternoon, their mother's going to be getting all three telegrams. Oh! That is so tragic! Oh my god. She's gonna get all three telegrams at the same time. Okay, so this is what they're doing. They're trying to save the last Ryan so that this poor mom doesn't have to lose all of her kids. Oh! I'm not okay! This is already so hard. Why did I even put makeup on? I don't know. The boy's alive. We are gonna send somebody to find him. It's gonna be Tom Hanks' character, isn't it? Oh God, they gotta go like look for this guy who they, they don't really know where he is, you know? Or even if he's alive, it's insane. Honestly, I would be really pissed if I was a member of the army and they were like, oh, go find this guy. He may or may not be alive. Good luck. I understand you speak French and German. Yes, sir. I'm going to a place called Newville. Yes, when yes, was sir. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, God. He's such a mess. Bring my typewriter, sir. May I bring my typewriter? Oh, I really want this guy to survive, guys. Please tell me he survives. He's so klutzy. I like him, but I'm also, like, nervous that he's gonna mess some stuff up, you know? Hey. hey want your head blown off, you fancy little... I'm just wondering where you're from. I'm just wondering where you're from. <laughs> Oh, see, I like this guy, but yeah, he's just not used to combat. He hasn't seen the same kind of shit that they've seen. I like that we're getting to see their dialogue a bit more and getting to know each one of these soldiers a bit more individually. Oh, it's a baby. No, don't throw them. No, 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 no. 
A gunshot. What happened? Did he just get shot? He was on the ground before we heard the shot. Yeah, he was he fell on the piano before That's I right. even heard a shot. This sniper guy is so smart, man. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Oh my god, that's the sniper. Don't shoot him. Oh no. Who is he? Oh no, he's gonna shoot that guy. Oh no. No! Holy moly, man. That way they executed that was so scary. Oh, she's hitting her father. Oh. That's why we can't take children. Yeah. Wow, we got the moral of that really quickly. I mean, we're not even halfway through the movie, so <laughs> I don't think we're that close to finding Ryan. Get Ryan up here. Wait, are we gonna find him? Is he here? Captain Miller's second rangers wants a word with you. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm like, we're not gonna find him for a while, and then literally it's the scene where we find him. <laughs> Your brothers are dead. How do you deliver news like this? It can't be. My brother's still in grammar school. What? So you're James Ryan. <laughs> yeah. James Francis Ryan, Mile. James Frederick Ryan, Minnesota. Oh my God! <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they're fine. Are you sure that they're okay, though? I oh my God! Oh God, you just traumatized this man for no reason. Oh. Understand what you're doing. Oh my God, that's Ted Danson, isn't it? Took me a minute to recognize him. When you end up killing one of your men, you tell yourself it happened, so you could save the lives of two, or three, or ten others. You know, this Ryan better be worth it. <laughs> yeah, man, I agree. I know she just wanted to find out about my day. I still wouldn't know. I'd still pretend to just be asleep. Uh, did that. Wow. They've been utilizing a lot of like wide shots, so when you see a close up in this movie, it's like it really means something because it's been mostly wides and mediums, and that was like the slow zoom in on him throughout that monologue. It was really moving. It's a refill time. Oh, now he's gonna ask him. He has to know where everyone's from. What's the pool up to? <laughs> What is going on? What is in, going on in his mind? Why are we seeing this? That was really beautiful, but I feel like that was a little needlessly cinematic, if I'm being honest, because it just kind of confused me, because it seemed like he was going to turn around and say something, and then he didn't, and it was utilized as a transition. This, however, is... That was really cool, seeing them walking with the explosion. As explosions as lighting, that was really cool. I'm, I'm enjoying that there's, I'm starting to see them play with light more. Because in the beginning, it was more about like everything going on around you and how overwhelming and brutal it all was. And now, in that sequence, we got to see them settle into a bit more of an emotional scene and get to know them a bit more and see the lighting be a bit softer. I'm welding a couple of steel plates onto our deck to keep the general safe from ground fire. Unfortunately, they forgot to tell me about it until we were just getting airborne. 22 guys dead. Fubar. What does Fubar mean? I want to know. Tell me what it means. Am I, I, maybe by the end I'll figure out what Fubar means. You know Private Ryan? You're gonna have to speak up. You're sir. gonna have to speak Please, up, so sir. Good. My hearing is not knows. so good. You know Private Ryan? Who? Private <sighs> Ryan? James Ryan? Ryan, man, Ryan. Ramel. Ramel. Oh Maybe no. That's the last I seen of him, sir. Oh my God, they're so close to him. If only he hadn't gone to Ramel and just come here. Mellish, you hook to the right, I'll go up to middle. Who's oh God, going I don't want anyone to die here, but I think people will. Nobody wants to volunteer. Who's going left? I'll do it. Uh, I'll go left. All right. You know going left is like riskier. Oh, is he gonna die? I like this guy. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Dude. This is so suspense inducing, watching it from his perspective. That was his job. His job was to stay back and bring the gear up when, when they were done pushing. Oh my god. Who is it? Who is it? 
Oh, it's this guy. It is the guy who went left. I knew it. That's my liver. He knows. What can we do when he tells what to do? Nothing. I could use, I could use a little morphine. <laughs> I knew this guy was gonna die when he volunteered to go left. I wanna go home. I wanna go home. Please don't shoot. Yeah, he doesn't. You don't care. Sorry, you're gonna let them kill him? Yeah, dude. What do you think this is? This, this is, is war. Right. None of this makes sense. I mean, none of these guys should be dying. I I agree with the corporal, but I understand everybody else's frustration and anger as well. He's losing all of his men for this Ryan guy. Like, it makes it so much harder to justify this mission, you know? He's losing all of his men. They're gonna kill him. They're gonna kill him, aren't they? Are they about to shoot him? No. See, he Oh, I feel, I do feel so bad. I like America. Fancy schmancy, what a scent, go fly a kite, get back your tongue, come beans. I say, can you see, I say, can you see. Oh my god, he's just quoting American things. Oh god, this is heartbreaking, man. He says he's sorry about Wade. He says he's sorry about Wade. Oh god, they're still gonna kill him, aren't they? I know you're upset, but like, really, he should be a prisoner. You gotta be kidding me, we'll let him go. Oh my god, right. he is letting him go. Can't take him with us. Our guys will pick him up sooner or later. Can't you just let the enemy go? This is such bullshit. Guys, right. I understand you're upset and you want vengeance for your friend, but you gotta make the decision at the end of the day that you can sleep with. And I mean, most of what's happened in this war, like you're not gonna be able to sleep after this. I'm done with this mission. Where are you gonna go? He's deserting? Don't shoot him. He's not gonna shoot him. The pool? Oh my god, Tom, why are you so freaking calm right now? What's the pool on me up to right now? I'm a school teacher. What? He's telling him his life? This little town called Adley, Pennsylvania. Oh my god, this is the moment he chooses to tell them all? I don't know anything about Ryan. I don't care. You know, if going to Ramel and finding him so he can go home, if that earns me the right to get back to my wife, well then, that's what yeah. I just know that every man I kill, the farther away from home I feel. Wow, what he picked the right time to let them in on all that information and use that as motivation. Wait, what? Where did these guys come from? Ryan, first of 506. James Francis, Ryan. What? Is that him? Yes, sir. How'd you guess that? <laughs> oh god, now he's got to tell this guy. He's got to deliver hard news again. <laughs> Your brothers were killed in combat. Which, which ones? All of them, man. All of them. Oh god. My orders are to bring you back. I wonder if he's even going to want to go home. I have my orders too, sir. They don't include me abandoning my post. I understand that, but this changes things. Oh god. I appreciate that he's at least the kind of man that doesn't want to abandon his post. Someday we might look back on this and decide that saving Private Ryan was the one decent thing we were able to pull out of this hole. That's a way to put a positive spin on it. What are you thinking, Corporal? What are you thinking? We keep zooming in on him a lot, and I'm just curious if there's a bigger meaning to that. Like, if is he gonna sacrifice himself at some point, or because he's so morally good, you know? Like, he's really been trying to do the morally right thing a lot. I'm just curious what's gonna happen with him. Uh, beyond all recognition. Oh. <laughs> I missed it. Did he s say it out loud? What it means? Like the acronym? The situation? He just figured it out, but I didn't. Wait a minute. I can't rewind either. Oh, dang it. Okay, I'll have to, I'll figure it out in the edit maybe. What does it mean? I still don't know. He figured it out. He was my oldest brother, Dan, with Alice, <laughs> Alice Jardine. So he's working on this bra and he's trying to get it off and John just screams out, Danny, you're a young man. <laughs> don't do it. 
Oh, God. Wow, I'm honestly, I'm surprised. I really didn't even think we were going to meet Ryan. So the fact that we're meeting him and we're getting like this sentimental moment with him where you get to see some insight into him. It's nice. You know, it's funny. Um, I was talking to Tyler before watching this movie and he was saying some people get on Spielberg for being a little too sentimental when it comes to this movie. And I get it now. This movie has a lot of sentimental moments for sure. Corporal, you need to get wherever the you need to get okay up him is he where he's supposed to be i have my doubts because <sighs> his job is so important and i'm just like nervous i don't know if i have faith Corporal. up him we don't have a 30 caliber machine gun in this position either mr mellish or mr jackson in the bell tower needs that jesus christ up him i know somebody needs to have that job but i just don't have faith in him i'm so nervous oh and he's got a cross up him up him go move 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 Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. My heart is like... Up him! Up him! Up him! Up him! Oh, my God. Where is your helmet? Up him! Where is your helmet? I will say the first scene was so overwhelming with how many people were dying so brutally when they were storming the beach that everything else has felt a lot more manageable to watch since then. Like, they really dropped me in and, like, slapped me in the face. But the stakes are a lot higher for me now because I know people. Is he about to die? Because this is the third time we've seen him praying in this situation. The rule of threes, I feel like he's gonna die. Oh, the tank. Oh! Wow, they, I will say Spielberg has used a really interesting... He plays with perspective a lot, you know, through the sniper rifle or through um, Upham's, like, little telescope thing earlier and like the perspective from the German sniper before. Abum! Go! Come on! I'm out! Oh no, they're out. Abum! I swear to God, if that was Abum and they just shot him because he didn't say something. Oh, and they're freaking wrestling right now. This is so insane. Where is Upham? Is he dead? What the hell? Upham! He's losing it. Oh, he's freaking scared shitless. No, 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 no. I, sw I don't want Mellish to go out this way. I don't want him to go out this way. Upham, hurry up! Come on! No, 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 no! You gotta be f***ing kidding me. You gotta be f***ing kidding me. Upham could have saved him. Is he letting him live? He let him live? Oh, he's a wreck. He's not built for combat, man. That is heart-wrenching. And like, realistic, you know? Cause there are gonna be people like that who just can't, can't fight through the shock and the horror. And he even admitted from the beginning that he was not good in combat. <gasps> that shot of having the tank come over. I am just amazed at how they filmed all this. Okay, I'm sorry. How is this guy like still alive? I want him to live, but I just, I, I just don't get it. He's literally just cowering and hiding. He's on the other f side. What is he gonna do? Upin's totally gonna die, but what is he gonna do? He just shot him. That was Tom. Do something, man! Do something! I have so much tension in my body right now. Really? How did he do that? <gasps> no f way. Reinforcements arrived just at that time? He's holding them all hostage? Is that the guy that let him live? Oh my god. Oh my god. It's the guy that let him live and then he shot him. Hey guys, coming at you with a quick disclaimer. I know that I said I missed a lot of faces in this movie and I missed a pretty big one here. Clearly, I thought this guy was the guy who killed Mellish, not the guy that Upham wanted to let go as a prisoner earlier in the movie, the guy who killed Wade. So I mixed, <laughs> I mixed those two guys up. Uh, I was so close, but no cigar on this one. 
my friends on Patreon as well as Tyler pointed this out to me. And knowing what I know now and seeing how he shot the captain, it definitely makes this moment even more powerful than what I thought it was, which it still moved me immensely. And you'll see that. But yeah, sometimes you just can't catch everything. And I had to watch this movie on my phone, unfortunately. But that won't be happening for future movies. So <laughs> thanks for bearing with me on this one. All right, back to the movie. Oh, and he let them go, but he killed the guy that killed Mellish. Whoa. He compromised on the rule that he didn't want to compromise on before because he understands now. He let his brother down. And he felt like he had to do that. That's, oh, that's so poetic and sad. Wait, is Tom Hanks' character gonna die? And James is actually the one who we saw at the beginning of the movie as an old man? Oh my God. Oh God, they really got me. They really made you feel safe that Tom Hanks was gonna live because of the way they started off the movie. Oh my God, all those men, oh. <laughs> That's why this guy's so emotional at the memorial because it's all the men who saved him and died literally saving him. Is that Mellish? The one Jewish star in the Sea of Crosses? <laughs> you are. God, the amount of guilt he must live with for the rest of his life, that, that's insane. My heart like actually hurts. That was a very heavy movie, really beautiful. It's interesting because there were definitely some moments that I think were a little overly sentimental, but I think it went well with the piece because there were so many gruesome moments as well that were just so brutal where you'd see people die so fast and in such horrific gut-wrenching ways. And so I think having the sentimentality and the romantic moments to balance the movie out was nice. I went through a lot of tissues. My heart hurts because, I mean, even the ending, it's not really a happy ending at all. I, I just imagine that Private Ryan would be living with an immense amount of guilt the rest of his life, and you wonder if it was worth it, and I don't know, you know? I don't think the movie really gives you a clear resolution. I am happy that some people survived. I think it's the way that Upham, the way that it, the story ended for him was really, really poetic, seeing him start from a place of fighting for a German prisoner's life and not wanting him to be killed to later understanding exactly that pain and suffering that everybody felt when Wade died and shooting a man who was surrendering. There was a part of me that was so frustrated that he wasn't doing more, but in the end he did what he needed to. And it, it war is so messy to begin with that like, it's not one of those movies that you can just root for one side or another because it's just messy and at the end of the day like when it comes to war I, I don't really want anyone to be killing one another or getting hurt or dying so it's this is a really intense piece to react to but um i'm glad i got to watch it here with you guys for the first time i'm sure i'll process a lot more of this movie when i edit this video because i will be editing this one myself and um i'm sure there's a lot of little things that i maybe missed i still don't know what foobar means <laughs> And I'm pretty sure that Mellish kind of taught up him what foobar meant uh, in that scene that I was talking over. So I'm sure I'll catch that in the edit. And I'm sure I'll catch a lot of other stuff that I might not have picked up on the first time watching. But this was a really great suggestion. So thank you so much, guys. I know I can't do stuff like this all the time or I would be an emotional wreck. But I really do enjoy watching movies like this from time to time because I enjoy watching really well-made films that are artistically well done and have a lot of hidden meaning to them. And, and also I just enjoy being able to familiarize myself more with director's work like Spielberg because at this point, most of the stuff that I'd seen from Spielberg were things like Jaws and Jurassic Park. So it's good to be able to watch um, a more grounded drama from him. I definitely appreciate suggestions for films like this. So thank you for that. But for now, that is all I have for you guys in this video. So if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up because it really helps me out and lets me know that you guys want to see more content like this. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and anything else you might like me to watch next and subscribe if you want to. Until the next one, stay golden. Bye.